Hi everyone, in this video I'd like to um, demonstrate very simple experiment of the sound perception and the harmonic motion, the simplest harmonic motion we can play with. The first function we're going to consider here is this function. I use this subscript y1t sine of 880 pi t. So this is the constant in front of it. So let's think about frequency of this function, which is given by this 880 pi divided by 2 pi. So that will give you 440. So this 440 is number I see every day from my um, electronic tuner. This is a musical note of A that corresponds. So if you see uh, 404 hertz, that means it's vibrating 440 times per second. So if something is uh, vibrating in a very simple motion called simple harmonic motion, and it's with this frequency information, we can set it out like this. So let me consider the second function. The second function looks like this. Is your, because the way I, I have written it, it looks a lot like the earlier function. It's just that it has this 1.5 um, ratio multiplied to this coefficient from here. You can see we will compute exactly the same. So here's a frequency. It's going to be just this one and divided by 2 pi. So it's going to be exactly 1.5 times 440 hertz. So if you use your turn tuner and if you look at um, this note, it's this um, fifth interval above. So in this case, it's going to be musical note E. This the relationship between these two musical notes, the mus um, interval of these two notes, is known as a perfect fifth in music. And the history about this perfect fifth goes all along. This very first notion, the Pythagorean um, notion of the perfect fifth, and because of this principle um, we encounter here, this is supposed to be really the perfect fifth and the keyboard players uh, wanted some ability to transcribe the same pieces in a different keys. They had to adjust this idea of the perfect fifth in a slightly different way, but this is the very first notion of the perfect fifth. So it sounds really technical right now, but I'm going to turn into a molecule motion um, here and make it more look like um, some something that you actually perceive. So this is pretend that this is supposed to be a very small air molecule here, and we don't exactly know how there, which direction is vibrating, but it's air molecules, so there are a lot of room in between these air molecules, and we're just um, simply assuming that these guys are going back and forth really quickly, like 440 hertz, 40 times per second. And with a certain amount of oscillation, this oscillation, how much it moves up and down, or left and right, how much that wriggles correspond to loudness here of the sound you perceive. How fast is going back and forth is um, called the frequency and that uh, correspond to the musical pitch that you perceive. For the short period of time I think it will vibrate back and forth with the kind of uh, same loudness but soon it dies out. Um, but interestingly enough, uh, many of the sound we create with a musical instrument, where the, while they're going back and forth like this, they somewhat um, maintain this frequency. The, the time it takes to go back and forth is going to be exactly the same, um, even though it is uh, moving back and forth a little bit small. So let me demonstrate it like this. Let's say first of uh, one second, it was moving back and forth like this back and forth like this. And with this 440 hertz, that means time it takes to move back and forth here takes 1 over 440 seconds. In this short period of time, it, moved, it repeats a one cycle. So over one second, of course, it's going to be moving back and forth 440 times. That's happening very short period of time. A little later, uh, maybe 1.5 seconds later, you immediately notice that it's not moving back and forth a lot. It, the, you know, the sound dies out. Amazing thing is that while it's going back and forth, forth like this in a very small oscillation with a very small oscillation, 
but the time it takes to go make this complete cycle like this, go back and forth, it still turns out to be still um, happening within that 100, 1 over 444th uh, seconds. This is kind of uh, amazing why it's doing it. But if it is happening like this and at the beginning and at the end of the sound cycle, we still hear the same pitch. If it is happening like this, and that's how we um, recognize as a fine musical sound, and anything that maintains this kind of a property is, should be, I think, called harmonic motion. And we've been um, studying this in my differential equation or in my pre-calculus course a little bit about this um, mathematical formulation of this motion. All right, for the first part, we're going to focus on the simple harmonic motion. What that means compared to what we have just um, discussed let me finish writing it. Here, a simple harmonic motion is that we assume, we, for example, we look at um, a period of four seconds, and we kind of assume the num uh, amount of oscillation of this molecule here is kind of the same. It doesn't change. It doesn't die out quickly over the time period we're looking at. Let's say it was a four seconds. If this um, amplitude, the oscillation, is not changing over four seconds, very negligible change, then we just assume it's a simple harmonic motion. And this position is described in here, and the position is described in here, and the second one, so it's kind of moving back and forth exactly about the same amplitude here, the coefficient in front of sine is 1, 1, so we're looking at the same amplitude, or this one, or the 1.5 times 440 hertz, right? The following is a, a common misconception that we can't just add these two positions to understand what happens when we put these two sounds together. It is really the force is exerted on this air molecule and those uh, forces put together and a net force had, is something we have to calculate in there. So um, this part is, if you haven't taken any calculus, this part will be um, not easy to understand but um, the following notation is the uh, notation for the acceleration of this position. And if you look at acceleration of this position, it turns out, and let me erase it here, it's the number is involved here is not very important, so I'm going to use just this notation directly proportional to the negative sign of that exact same thing. So if you're in a positive, um, coordinates, if this is a zero coordinate, if you're above that, the force is acting opposite way. That's pretty much what it is, it's directly proportional, whatever the exact magnitude of the force is, so that's for it. So the other one is again directly proportional to the negative sign of that number, like this. So adding these two things as a net force makes sense. If you think about it, adding these two, two positions doesn't make sense. But adding two forces um, together kind of makes sense. So you have to um, look at, by looking at the position here, this uh, Y1 is vibrating like this due to some of the force by Newton's idea that acceleration is exactly the, how the force is um, acting on, the, um, the force exerted on that object. By looking at Y1, however you create it, whatever musical instrument you use, the force the, um, the very forces acting on the air molecule is interpreted as this one. If there is a second person um, playing musical instrument that creates a force exerted air molecule like this is mathematically described like this. If these two things are played together, if these two forces are acting on the mo air molecule all together, that's the net force. So adding these two things makes sense if you assume they're both uh, moving up and down one dimensionally. And that's why you go from here to be, um, going there. It seems like we're just adding the, you know, these two positions together. So adding two positions together makes no sense, but adding these two forces together makes sense. And mathematically, if you want to derive the um, resulting positions, it is as if we're adding these two things. So the result is the same. So we're going to look at this 
function that are added together will be quite representative of um, two sounds put together. So if there is one air molecule here and two sources of the sound is played, two sources of forces acting on this one air molecule, how is it going to move up and down? Is through that, turns out, as if we're adding these two things together. So I'm going to write it down. All right, I will be um, using this space here. So we're going to look at the new position, yt, position function, resulting from these two sources of force, two sources of a sound that is acting on these air molecules together. After you do that mathematics, it's simply, um, this is an example. This one sound position and add it to another sound position, which is now makes sense. Before, I pretend it doesn't make sense. How can you add two positions or here? It makes sense. So this is kind of representative. Now, if you sketch this two, um, this sum of two sine functions with a different um, period and a frequency, and this is going to tell us how does this air molecule actually move up and down. So this it will be a mathematical result. So I, I typed in uh, its first function y1, y2 with the second function, and I'm comparing all those things together with this juxtaposition of these two functions. So when I did that, it created this graph. So let me first uh, focus on, let me change the cursor. All right, I think I changed the cursor. First, uh, look at this blue curve. I hope you can see this as a blue curve here. That has a slightly longer stretched out. That means it's moving slow up and down a little bit slower. So that would be the musical note A going up and down here. And the purple one here is moving up and down a little bit faster. It's, it's the maximum position and maximum height it reaches again. You can see it's a lot shorter than the other um, the molecule here. So this is moving faster, so it's a higher note. It's 1.5 higher frequency than that. So if you interpret it again as a kind of equivalence of a force, if you put together, this is how the force is acting together, it turns out this is the shape. This is no longer kind of same amplitude. Look, it's interesting. Uh, movement of air molecule because of these two forces. It goes at the beginning very loud sound and then after a little bit later it moves very small amplitude and it moves uh, loud again and the, even the crossing of this thing is a slightly different. But eventually, if you look at further to the right, eventually you will see some of this complicated cycle is repeated over exactly the same period of time. If that happens, um, our eyes and our brain perceive this as a fine um, quality sound. If there is no repetition of this one in a short period of time, it's constantly doing um, e irregular patterns of this motion, we usually uh, perceive that as a dissonant sound, not a good um, sounding sound. What is uh, very interesting to me is about this is one air molecule, for example, moving up and down in a slightly subtle fashion can carry these two separate musical uh, pitches and when we perceive that our brain kind of you know you have an experience of listening to the fine musical sound of two notes and three notes that are all played together and our perception is all depending on how this guy is moving in what fashion and what period of time and that regular fashion is our physical analysis of our perception. We usually perceive this variety of different sounds of a texture and timbers and everything, perceive it as a multivariable uh, phenomenon, multidimensional, that's I think the right word, multidimensional phenomenon. But what's really happening it is this molecule going up and down in a slightly different fashion creates that multi-dimensional to me is almost sound like infinite dimensional experience listening to sound and music but it is all about this guy moving up and down for example not in the simple fashion slightly more complicated fashion but there's some order in there and from that we perceive it as a nice sound I kind of deceptively try to hide that try to uh, describe this our phenomenon our experience of perceiving this nice sound as a simple up-down motion 
but it is well known in mathematical and physics, the sum of this wave is a typical example of infinite dimensional vector space. So each of these things, and with a different, different frequency, acted as a basis element of infinite dimensional vector space. So here is the fact. The simple motion of this air molecule, mathematically, in, in, even in physics, is a representation of infinite dimensional world. Just going up and down. Doesn't have to move around the three dimensional space. Just simple motion up and down on here, you have already entered infinite dimensional world. So, this part I was just having fun with the Mathematica. I typed in this uh, 440 frequency sine wave, and here is 1.5 higher. I don't have the number for the musical note E and fifth uh, interval above. Perfect fifth. So I actually use this command play in Mathematica and create the two different separate sound and I juxtapose them together like this and create a different wave. So this is the way the Mathematica represent the sound module. So it is nothing but just a um, platform to play the sound. So I'm going to play that one. So this is 440 simple sounds created by machine. That was a 440. Down here is 1.5 frequency higher. So let's sound it. That was A and that was E. So I put it together like this as a simple um, the motion, but um, how, I don't know exactly what this means, but um, in Mathematica, way of representing the sound. So here's how the sound look, sound like. So as you can see, you can kind of hear both pitches and the plate together. It's happening very fast, and our perception is like two different sounds, but it is just one simple motion of the air molecule. Not so simple, but it is just up and down motion in a slightly um, complicated fashion.